dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I've now come to this room many times. Some of you are used to the channeling, others tolerate it. <laughs> others are in the dark. <laughs> Dear ones, this is a time of reflection. It's a time of compassion, understanding, tolerance. It's a scientific meeting filled with spirituality and esoterics. There's something here for everyone. But this is the closing channel. This is a time when you'd think we would say goodbye. How many times have we faced this particular situation where we say there is no goodbye? I'm going to offer up something. I'm going to call it the five alignments. What are you aligning with right now? As you sit in the chairs, as you ponder all the things that you have seen in the last three days. Number one, what is your alignment with the others that you have met? Is there one? Do you feel something that might be unusual here and not just social? Perhaps this is your first time to a meeting that is this esoteric. Perhaps it's not. But have you met those that you feel you've either known before or are so familiar that they're family? Have you gone out of your way to perhaps say hello to others? I would like to tell you, it goes way beyond that, dear ones. Old souls intermix in such beautiful ways. You've heard of the field. We're in a good place to talk about the physics of it, but we're not going to. It creates synchronicities and harmonies and things that you could never plan yourself. Have you met friends from other places? Meetings with old souls often bring the synchronicity of this together. It's almost like an invitation, an invitation to see and feel things that you would never feel or see in a meeting that was not like this. An alignment is not a friendship. An alignment is a meld. And the best way to align with another person is through compassion. You've heard the words here many times. The togetherness. The resonance. The confluence. When you put energies together and they resound one with another. That's alignment. Did you know that you could instantly right now have an alignment with everyone in the room? Alignment. You are starting to think like they think because you have a common goal or you have that which is a commonality and that would be God inside. Is there an alignment here? 
the meeting started not by accident with the collapse of a soul here and there were two reasons for it dear ones and the one is to melt your heart put you in a way that was harmonious with her and instantly there were many who went into a meditation mode of healing of peace of benevolence and the second reason it happened was for her healing if she's going to collapse there is no better place than here that is how the meeting started the first channel the first time that I came in with my partner in this series there was a seeming emergency among you that is an alignment now here is a question can you align without the emergency can you see the God in every single one of these people you don't even speak the same language does it really matter can you return to that moment three days ago when your hearts were melted when you were with that soul and you were giving her peace and pouring her compassion and you had a common goal that is alignment not friendship that lets two individuals who've never seen each other stand and hug one another because they just experienced a compassion together What is your alignment with nature? When my partner started the tour that will end soon, he was in a majestic place. It was a quiet place in the desert called Monument Valley. There was such silence you could feel it. There was a unity to the land because those indigenous had practice for eons, seemingly. The ones, their ancestors before them even, they honored the land. They loved the land. They aligned with the land. And that's how it began. On to Europe, he ended the alliance with the planet teaching in Ireland where the land comes alive so much grows there there is so much life that the tradition and the mythology is always the ability to see the little people that is a land that is multi-dimensional what is your alliance with the land align with nature and there are those who had said well I would like to but I work in the city I'm in an office I come and go or I don't work at all but it's difficult to get out of town dear ones getting out of town has nothing to do with it when you breathe the air do you recognize where the oxygen came from? Do you realize that the plants and the trees gave it to you? That there's a symbiotic relationship, whether you want it or not, with nature? Is there an alliance, an alignment in your life with nature? And if there is not, I'll tell you something. that this is one of the best alignments you could have because you are from the dirt of the earth if you look at how you got here as life itself it was a mixture of the elements 
that created you. Coming right out of the elements, that which is the earth itself, developing the symbiotic relationship with the trees and the plants so that you could exist and live eons ago brought you to this place. It's no time to forget that. That's alignment number two. Alignment three. What is your alignment with the stars? Oh, dear ones, this is a good one. And you might say, well, I really don't have an alignment with the stars, actually. And I would say, why? And you would say, well, it's not relevant to my life. I still live in the cities. I can't even see the stars. <laughs> Did you realize that the stars and the planets and the solar systems that revolve around them are all of the same stuff that your Earth is made of? I've said it before, that the elements on this planet are the elements in the galaxy. There's not a lot of unknown elements. They're all here. Oh, perhaps you struggle to see what's inside the atom, but you don't have to struggle to understand that there is dirt everywhere. Indeed, there's different gravities, there's different gases, there are different sizes, but I am talking about the fact that this earth came from all of them. And you're part of the earth. And that means when you cast your eyes to the stars, they are part of you. Did you hear some of the teaching today from the scientists? who talked about that which is so close to you, and that is the DNA. Did you hear them discuss the fact that perhaps, just perhaps, you didn't come from anything here? And if that's the case, where did you come from? Dear ones, you are a combination of the biology of the evolution of the planet and the evolution of consciousness from the stars. What is your alignment with the stars and those in the stars? Is it possible that there are consciousnesses outside of your planet that are active, that you can feel, that you can understand the benevolence of? Could there be others watching you or even here that only have you in mind and your shift and the benevolence and the compassion to help you through it? And the answer is yes. So what is your relationship to the stars? Dear scientist, is it a stretch to break the barriers of belief? And think for a moment there might be more to life than you think. It is so big. The enormity of the reality of who you are and where you have come from is astonishing. And there you sit wondering who you are. What if I told you there are far more entities in the galaxy that know you than there are humans on the planet? That know the condition that you have, free will, hands off, until you make the decision that you have started to make of the shift. New things are coming to this planet as you evolve esoterically in your consciousness and begin to realize the alignment to the stars is real. There are other alignments. Number four. 
What is your alignment to you? Brian, what do you mean? What is my alignment to me? That's an odd question. I'm just me. Really. And how do you feel about just me? When you think about who you are, how you feel in life, is there an alignment with you? I started this by asking, what is your alignment with others? Can you see the God in others? Can you see the God in yourself? What is your alignment with yourself? I will tell you yet again and again and again. So many humans, even those old souls, look at that alignment and it's broken because they see themselves as unworthy, as less than. Are you in love with yourself in a non-egotistical way? Or is it dysfunctional? I'll tell you, most of all, it's dysfunctional. And that, my dear human, is one of the first alignments that you're going to have to make. Well, crying if it's the first alignment, why is it number four? And the answer I will give you in a moment. How is it you with you? When you walk out of the room, do you think things like, I am worthy to be here. This was beautiful because I created it beautiful. Did you learn during the three days that you don't have to ask for things? Who would you be asking? God? When God is inside you, are you asking yourself? The paradigm has changed. Instead of asking, you are aligning. Aligning with the truth, a reality of who you are. You learn that affirmations and the proper way of stating and feeling them actually often are in contrast with the moment. The sick person affirming health in three dimensions would seem to be foolish. But if you understood how the work of this is, you'd understand that the sick person affirming their health is talking about who they are becoming, who they will become, aligning with the future of someone who is healthy. That is an alignment with yourself. Are you, are you in that mode? Do you understand that? Are you worthy? Can you sit before God and know you belong? When you think of the auditorium, which is the earth, is there a seat with your name on it, or are you sitting in the back? Did you ever think of that? Where is your place, dear ones? Do you belong? Or are you just on the sidelines hoping to exist? Perhaps you've had something beat you up like disease. And now you've been told that all of this is part of your own thinking. And you could have victory over it. If the alignment with you is there. How are you aligned with yourself? Can you have a visualization of hugging yourself and saying, good job. We've gone through another day. We're becoming more balanced and we're starting to understand love. 
Is that you? Dear ones, it is if you wish it to be. Free will is always the key. These are things you can do or not as you choose. That was number four. Number five. What is your relationship to the Creator? Have you figured it out yet? Is it possible that you have inside you a piece of that which you call God, which we call the creative source? Did you recognize the difference in language between God and the creative source? God is a singular name from one force. The creative source is expansive. It can be as many as you want. Did you know that God is many? Did you know that it is infinite and all over? Did you know that it permeates every single piece of matter? It is not one at all. What is your relationship to matter? Can you align with the Creator? Because the Creator is in you. If the answer is yes, even marginally yes, then you have to say to yourself, therefore, I am that I am multidimensional a piece of every single human being beyond that which you can see has many dimensions there is where the evolution of humanity will occur the alignment between you and the creative source will create a multidimensional change in you one who starts to become multidimensional starts to soar in their intellect, in their intuition. And that is where all things new will become real. What is your alignment with the creative source? As you walk out the door, can you say, I'm a piece of the creation. I have it inside me. I am eternal. Now I just gave you five. And now I'll tell you a secret. There's only one. I just gave you five pieces of the one alignment. There is only one alignment and it is in a circle. All of you are together in the field. There is an invitation for you to feel this. All of you are together with the alignment with the creative source. All of you are together with the alignment of yourself. All of you are together in the alignment with nature and the stars. It is one alignment with many facets, like a jewel, like a diamond that wants to shine so bright. And once you start to see it, intermingle you start to understand all that is that you have inside you it is that point in time when you realize that it's all connected it is that time when you realize you can't be alone and that other individuals and other souls and their benevolence and their love for you is very real and very caring very loving you cannot be alone we have told you that if you go into a closet and shut the door there's a million angels with you but dear ones if everyone is part of the creative source that means that everyone in earth at some level is also in that closet can you align with that thought? 
you're not alone. You were never alone. But the three-dimensionality of an old energy, the veil, comes down and deceives you. It says that you are nothing, you're less than, you don't have a chance. No one cares, no one loves you. And that when you die, it's over. Those are the deceptions that we have covered before. The veil is starting to lift and you know better, you know better. All that has been said in these last three days, talk about this fact. The discoveries of old point to this fact, that there is a new energy on the planet and that you are sitting in it. Dear old soul, what does all this mean? The new paradigm that is here asks you to look at things differently because of what is going to happen on the planet and begin with old souls. There are those in the room who do not believe in channeling, but you might believe in love. And you might leave this place a little different, having heard this, having felt what is here. There are those here who understand everything I've said because there are several of you who will leave healed and you haven't even discovered it yet. <laughs> when you start the alignment, the one alignment with all that is, suddenly the divinity of who you are starts to wrap around you and you realize you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to know the details. Things you may have forgotten this day are still in there. Things that you pretend to have learned this day, you haven't learned at all. You are simply remembering them. This is the old soul and the new energy. The one who is different, who craves balance, who starts to understand themselves and all that they might be able to accomplish as they walk out of here and show others their light. It is a new earth. You are a new human. If you choose to understand what I have just given you. It's up to you. Don't be afraid of the love of God. Some of you have never really, really let it in. You turn it on and off, don't you? It's only available when you meditate, perhaps, not understanding that it's 24 seven. You should feel it as you speak to others, as you eat dinner, as you go to sleep, as you wake up, it is so prevalent. There's nothing like the lover you have with the creative source. Until next time, think of these things. And so it is.